Hallelujah. Let us all pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for a time such as this. For Lord, this is a time that we have appointed to gather us as your children before you as our God. We therefore come here in the name of Jesus and we assemble by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, once again, you might be in our midst, glorify your name, honor your name, give us your word, and give us the power of the Holy Spirit. It is our prayer, Lord, that we give us understanding, wisdom, give us insight to the thing the Lord we are going to read from your word today. And that Lord, we might learn to be better Christians walking in the power of the Holy Spirit receiving all the blessings that Lord you've ordained for each and every one of us we thank you Lord in Jesus name Amen let's all be seated this evening um, for the next two Fridays we're going to be looking at a very, a very important subject which is often overlooked or it is underestimated by many Christians and that is the subject of the Holy Spirit baptism subject of the Holy Spirit baptism um, let's all turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 19 Let's open our Bibles to Acts 19, and we shall read verses 1 to 7. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now, the men were about 12 in all. There were 12 in all. So, the title is, Did You Receive the Holy Spirit? And today we're dealing with part one. Did you, the title is, Did You Receive the Holy Spirit? Part one. I began by saying that the subject of Holy Spirit baptism is of utmost importance, but it is not very well understood by many Christians, and therefore uh, they fall short of receiving all the fullness and the benefits of the Holy Spirit. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Part 1. In this text, we read of Paul uh, during his missionary travels, arriving in the city of Ephesus, where he planted the Ephesian church. Ephesian church. Church of the Ephesians. And uh, he met 12 disciples 
12 people have believed in Jesus. 12 believers. They were new converts who had forsaken their past lives, turned over their lives to God through Christ Jesus. So Paul could perceive that they were, uh, they were true converts. They were true converts. But he must have noticed that they lacked, they lacked something. And what they lacked was the person of the Holy Spirit. They were Christians. They had believed. But it's one step after the other. First you believe, then you are baptized into Christ and you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. We'll come to that very so shortly. So Paul was compelled to ask them this question. Did you believe... So, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. In fact, this is the spiritual situation of many Christians today. And it's very sad because we are actually in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. During the Old Testament days, the world was under the ministry of mainly God the Father. In the Old Testament days, it was mainly the ministry of God the Father. And during the time of the Gospels, when Christ came here on earth, the ministry of Jesus, during his stay here on earth, after his ascension to heaven, and the coming of the Holy Spirit since that time, that was the beginning of the church. The coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was that day marked the exact beginning of the church on earth here. And since then, the world has been, or the church has been under the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it's very important that every believer must receive actually the fullness of the Holy Spirit. If you are to experience, to see, to have evidence of his power in your life as a believer or as a Christian, you must understand and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So Paul asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, oh, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Can you imagine such a state of ignorance? Pathetic. Very, very sad. We have not even heard, we have not been told that there is a Holy Spirit. Because many churches don't actually teach the Holy Spirit. They teach, they teach God, they teach Christ, but they don't teach the Holy Spirit. <coughs> they teach God, they teach Christ, they teach Baba, they, they don't teach the Holy Spirit. And it's not good enough because we are actually in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And after that, when this ministry is ended, that is the end. The end will come. There's no other ministry coming after this. We are in the end. This is the, this is the last dispensation, the last era. So then Paul said, Ah, then into what ministry were you, into what baptism were you baptized? Now, into what ministry, into whose ministry were you baptized? Because as believers, we need to be baptized into God. You cannot be a believer if you've not been immersed. We come into that if you've not been made one uh, with God. So Paul was asked them, into what then were you baptized? Into what then? We, are, we believed, believers, disciples. But you must have been baptized into something. So then, now, it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So, if you have not even heard the Holy Spirit, then into what then were you baptized? You must have been baptized of something. You should be. It means that there may be you are just wasting your time. <laughs> so they said, into John's baptism. John had a baptism Jesus came after John. 
Jesus had a ministry, and we have the baptism into Jesus. You have the baptism, that's the water baptism. When you are baptized into Jesus, that is water baptism. And after that, you need to have the Holy Spirit baptism when a believer is now baptized into the Holy Spirit. And you need all these things. You need, you need to go through all these stages. So they said, well, we were baptized into John's um, baptism. But John's baptism had come to an end. John was only a forerunner. John was not God. John only came to teach. He came to, 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 to preach. People must, must, but must repent. Then he said they must repent and believe on him who was to come after. He said they, he said they should believe in him. Paul, Paul, sorry. Uh, John did not come preaching that people should believe in him. He said they should believe on him who was to come after him. So now, Paul had to give a lot of brief teachings. So they said, into John's baptism, then Paul said, verse 4, John indeed truly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who will come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. So, John's baptism was nothing at all. There was no power, no... It was only to lead people to lead to Christ. But having come to Christ, you need to be baptized into Jesus and you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When they heard this, verse 5, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, when they were baptized, they received water baptism. Now, they realized that, no, they were not, it, it's not a matter of John's baptism, but they need to be baptized into Jesus and then to the Holy Spirit. So, verse 5 says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the, of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now, the men were about 12 in all. They were about 12 in all. Praise the Lord. So, this short scripture underscores, points out the importance of the Holy Spirit baptism. Why Paul would take so much interest and go to such detail with 12 disciples that he, 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 he chanced to meet in the city of Ephesus. And he made sure that they understood the difference between John's baptism, Jesus' baptism, water baptism, and the Holy Spirit baptism. And he demonstrated to them that these things were real. So when he laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Praise the Lord. Clap your two hands for Jesus. So, Whoever you are, wherever you are, listen to me right now. Let it be known to you that there's something that is called baptisms. Baptisms. That every believer is expected. It is mandatory. It is compulsory because it is for your own good, for our own benefit. We must go to the baptisms. Now, therefore, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit like water baptism is actually to be immersed completely in the Holy Spirit. When you do water baptism, we immerse the believer in water. We haven't done one for two years because of COVID. As soon as we had a new pond built, COVID-19 came. So for over two years now, we haven't had any water baptism in FCC. But I think now, this year, on this year, we're going to start doing water baptisms. And the way to do water baptism is to actually immerse the believer completely, not partially, completely, not sprinkling water on the head, and not just pronouncing you baptized or laying hands on you, but actually to immerse the person wholly and bodily completely covered, immersed, submerged in water. And that's why we call water baptism. 
But that is not a subject of discussion or teaching this evening. We're looking at the Holy Spirit baptism. In the same way, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit is spiritually being immersed, submerged, completely immersed in the Holy, immersed in the Holy Spirit. And the believer then receives, when this is done, the believer then receives power from heaven. This is the thing. The believer, the person who believes in Jesus, then receives power from heaven. And that's why Paul was careful and patient to take the 12 disciples, the Ephesian disciples, through Holy Spirit baptism. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. The outward sign, these are the outward sign that the Holy Spirit had come upon them and that, that they had the power of the Holy Spirit from that time onwards. Now, Luke 24, verse 49. Luke 24, verse 49. Luke's Gospel. Chapter 24, verse 49. This is Jesus speaking. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, that the Holy Spirit, that the promise of the Father of the Holy Spirit. Behold, I send, in other words, behold, I send the Holy Spirit upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Beloved, without the, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without being immersed in the Holy Spirit, the believer cannot have power. You may have believed there are people who are content, they are happy, satisfied. They said, oh, I believe in Jesus. I'm a Christian. I, I belong to this church or that church. I pray daily. I, have, I do everything. But have not actually, really, received the Holy Spirit baptism. And such Christians lack the power of God. Because he, the power of the Holy Spirit is the anointing. When we talk about the anointing, the anointing, it simply means the presence of the Holy Spirit with his attendant power. And you cannot have the Holy Spirit in you if you have not received the Holy Spirit baptism. So Jesus said to the disciples that they should tarry in Jerusalem. They shouldn't go anywhere because if they went out, they would lack power. They lack power. They couldn't do anything. They would fall to temptation when oppression came, they were, oppression came, they were caving, they were giving. Don't forget, Jesus himself had to wait. He himself had to wait for 30 years until he was baptized at the Jordan by John. And as he came out of the Jordan River, he received the Holy Ghost baptism. When the Holy Spirit descended on him, body in the form of a dove. The Bible says how God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Before then, it was Jesus of Nazareth. But when he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, he now went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So it was after his baptism that he was tempted by the devil and he was able to overcome the devil. So it's very, very important that we all desire, pray, and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, Acts chapter 1, verse 5. Acts 1, verse 5. Acts of the Apostles, verse 1, verse, chapter 1, verse 5, sorry. Chapter 1, verse 5. Acts 1, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water. Again, this is Jesus speaking. For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So there's a, there's a water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism. And all these are mandatory. They are, they are necessary for the believer. Acts 1 verse 5. And again, the same Acts 1, this time verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. Jesus said, But you shall receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And the Holy Spirit can come upon you when you have received the Holy Spirit baptism. And even then, the power is not always there. It's come, it comes and goes. It comes and goes. We, we're coming to that. But you see, you cannot be a witness to Jesus. You cannot witness to Jesus effectively if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. If you are not being endued with power from on high, you cannot be an effective witness of Jesus. You may call yourself a Christian. You may, you may see you as a Christian, but when it comes to actually bearing the fruit of the Spirit or witnessing to Jesus, being a true witness of Jesus, it is almost impossible. You may try, but you'll be doing so all in the flesh, by the flesh. And don't forget, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's all by the Spirit of God. So Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Praise the Lord. Beloved, the Holy Spirit baptism is a mighty spiritual experience. And this results in the outward evidence or sign of speaking in tongues. So, if you think or believe you're a Christian and you haven't received the Holy Ghost baptism, therefore you're not able to speak, pray, sing in tongues, then you're not there yet. You're not completely, you are not fully there yet. Beloved, we're talking about baptism. It is not baptism into a Christian or a church denomination. We're not talking about baptism into FCAC or baptism into a Methodist church or the Anglican church. We're not talking about baptism into of the Catholic church. We're not talking about baptism into a church denomination. Because people take pride in the fact that I, I am a member of this church or a member of that church. And they think that will suffice, that is enough, that will be more than enough. We're talking about baptism into the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter which denomination you are in, you belong to. You can be a Methodist, Catholic, or whoever you are, wherever you are, but you need, there's only one spirit. There are thousands and thousands of church or Christian denominations, but there's only one spirit. And those who have believed and accepted, God will accept in that baptism. So it is not a church that you, are, you attend, that you attend, your member of that is important, but it's the question of whether you have the Holy Spirit baptism or not. And if your church does not teach the Holy Spirit baptism, if your church doesn't teach what I'm teaching now, then in fact, I can say that then that church is not a church. Because there's only one faith. There are not a hundred faith. There's only one faith. We must all, Bible says, we must all come to the unity of the faith and to the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. We must all come to the unity. There's only one faith. One faith. Not your, your church, not your denomination, but the Holy Spirit that you are baptized into. Just say amen with me. Amen. amen. Clap your two hands for Jesus. So, the Holy Spirit baptism is therefore a mighty spiritual experience resulting in the outward evidence or sign of speaking in tongues. Because see, tongue speaking is the language of heaven. Tongue speaking is the language of angels. That's why we don't understand it. Though we speak it, we don't understand what you're saying. We don't know the meaning of what you're saying. Because it's not an earthly language. 
because it's the language of angels, the heavenly language. And therefore, those who are outside, when I say those who are outside, unbelievers, they mock, they laugh because they don't understand these things. They cannot receive the Holy Spirit because they, they don't know him and the Holy Spirit does not know them. And therefore, they may laugh, they may mock, but that is their problem. Praise the Lord. Now, don't forget that the Holy Spirit you're talking about is a person. Don't visualize or imagine the Holy Spirit to be something abstract or something uh, imaginary. Something that you can imagine. Because there are some denominations that believe that the Holy Spirit is a wind. It's only a wind. And something is this or that. But he is actually a person. He's a person. Just like you, just like me. Only that he's spirit. And we're going to look at that presently. So, what it means is that church, being baptized into the Holy Spirit is you abiding in the person or the personality of the Holy Spirit. It's not that, it's not that some wind is blowing over you, no. It's you and that person becoming one. You and that person becoming one. And that person is actually the, the third person of the Godhead. He's not just an ordinary person, but he's also God. So we're talking about you and God becoming one when you receive the Holy Spirit baptism. And that's why we have power. That's why we are endued with power from high. And that's why we're able to be a witness to Jesus. Because then, you have God coming to you and you actually entering to God and God entering to you. So as you go about, you know, um, uh, they see God in you. They see Christ in you. Church, if you agree with me, say amen. amen. He's a person. He's a person. And he's a third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the three are one. The three from the Godhead. And he is the third person. But does it mean that he's a third, um, a third rate uh, citizen? No. He's co-equal with the Father, co-equal with the Son, and co-equal with himself. Praise the Lord. So 1 John 5, 7. 1 John 5, verse 7. First John 5, verse 7. First John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear witness in heaven. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, that Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. These three are one. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. One and the same. Co-equal in all attributes. We say that he's a person because he has personality attributes as seen below. A person is a person when he has personality attributes when he has qualities that are ascribed to a person we can tell a goat from a sheep because a goat has goats have their own attributes different from attributes of of sheep or dogs so a person is a person only when he or she has the makeup, makeup, the nature or the character of a person. And the Holy Spirit is a person because he has the nature, the makeup, and the character that make him a person. So don't forget that anytime we 
we mention the Holy Spirit here, we actually referring to a person. I remember when we were in chapter one, the, this man who used to visit, was he a member of our church, but he used to visit us regularly for our Friday prayer meetings. And he, he loved our prayer meetings. And then one day after a meeting, he came to me and said, he had noticed one thing. I said, what is it? He said, I've noticed that here you, in your church, you place a lot of emphasis, importance on the Holy Spirit. Whereas in my church is either God or Jesus. Everything is about God or Jesus. They hardly mention the Holy Spirit. But I've, you know he said, I've noticed that here you seem to place a lot of emphasis, a lot of importance on the Holy Spirit. I said, oh, yes. Because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they, they are co-equal. More so if we are in the, we are in the era, we are in the dispensation, we are in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And he is the one who works in our midst through Christ Jesus from the Father. He is the one who works in our midst. And that's what we call the anointing. That's what we call, presently call the anointing. You cannot have the anointing if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. You cannot. And that's why many churches like the anointing because they don't even, have, they don't, have not even heard <laughs> that there's even the Holy Spirit anywhere. The whole church has not even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. So how can that church be anointed? But may we be anointed here in the FCAC. And may you as, a, you as a personality be anointed in the name of Jesus. Attributes. So, we said the Holy Spirit speaks. He speaks. Only a person speaks. Gold don't speak. Trees don't speak. Stones don't speak. Persons speak. Speak. And when you have a child and uh, by five years the child has not spoken, you know there's something wrong with that child. But human beings, persons are supposed to speak. So, Acts 13, verse 2. Acts 13, verse 2. He speaks. The Holy Spirit speaks. A lot of times when there's prophecy here, um, when things are happening, the Holy Spirit who is working and speaking, Acts 13, verse 2. Or well, let's take verses 1 and 2. Acts 13, 1 and 2. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, now separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. The Holy Spirit said, spoke, and said, now separate to me, to him the Holy Spirit, means that he's also God. He's God because this was God speaking. They were to be separated unto God. So he said, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The Holy Spirit who is God has called them. So he speaks. Just say he speaks. Yes. So you're dealing with somebody who speaks, not just a wind or air or something imagine, something that you imagine. And then he works. Just, may the Holy Spirit speak in your lives. May he speak into your lives. He also works. And may he work for you. Or may he work your blessings out for you. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. First Corinthians 12, verse 11. He works. But one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. In fact, he, he, he do a lot of work. Working all the time. He's always working. Always working. He works. This is just one of the things that he does. He teaches. He teaches. John 14, verse 26. John's Gospel. 
14, verse 26. He teaches. So when you desire the baptism, you are designing all these things in your lives. When you get, a, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you may hear him speak into your spirit. He, he works, his works are available to you. And he, he also teaches you. So John 14, verse 26. Sorry. John to the 14. Verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, this is Jesus speaking, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He will teach you all things. In other words, he will teach you and give you understanding. First, he teach about the word of God give you understanding about the word of God and other things. Praise the Lord. He will teach you all things. May the Holy Spirit teach your children in school. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, before I became truly born again, before I received the Holy Ghost baptism, I knew the Bible. We studied in school as BK. We used to call it BK, Bible Knowledge. I studied BK as a subject at my old level, ordinary level, and I got grade two, which was very good. Those days, grade two was excellent. But it was just a, a textbook, textbook, which was chew and pour. I chewed and poured it out, and I got grade two, and I was very happy. But it was when I truly became born again and I received the Holy Ghost baptism, then things just began to acquire some new meanings. The, the word of God became alive to me. And I began to understand things better than even they taught us in school. Because the teachers who taught us were not, they were not even Christians. They were just teaching the BK as a subject. I remember my, one of my BK masters, he was a. Uh, we saw him yesterday drunk. Now today he's teaching me BK, you know. Uh, so, but when I became one again, then I began to understand. The whole world came alive. And I look at unbelievers. I look at people who, are, who don't believe. I see that. That's the reason why they don't, they don't even own a Bible. They don't see the word of God as living and powerful. The word of God is, to them, is like some dead book, some dead words. They don't, they don't even understand. They don't, they really don't understand. Nobody is there to teach them. Really teach them, they don't understand. So he teaches. Just say he teaches. And then he guides. He guides into all truth. He can guide you into the truth. When you are going wrong, you don't understand. He gives you the truth. John, same John chapter 16 it's chapter 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. That's why I call the spirit of truth. When you have him, you have the truth. He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will tell you things to come. John 16, 13. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. May the Spirit of truth tell you things to come. Everybody in the world wants to know about things to come. Everyone wants to know our things to come. This evening, as we are coming to church, my wife told me a very sad story about somebody who traveled from Tema all the way to Konongo. He was invited to Konongo to visit a prophet who would tell him things to come. <laughs> all the way from Accra to Konongo in the Asante Achim districts. 
of the Ashanti region of Ghana, very, very far away. If you are to was, I must go and pray. Go downstairs, go outside and pray. Different from what I was thinking, completely opposite. And I had to drag myself, you know, and I knew God was talking to me. So in all my tiredness, you know, I just got up and this is how I walked outside. <laughs> but as soon as I began to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, then all the tiredness disappeared. And all the the laziness evaporated and things began to happen. May God also speak to you in the same way. That you will not hear the audible voice of God. You will not hear God talking to you all the time. God, God, no, no, no. Not like the way he spoke to Moses. But the Holy Spirit, that's the way the Holy Spirit communicates with his children. And that's why we are learning these things today. And may we all learn this thing tonight. He has a mind. And he has a will. He has a will. What he wants to do. He has a will. You know, what, what he will, the thing that he wants to do. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. He has a will. He has a purpose. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. He has a will. That's the one you pray in. You pray, make sure you pray according to the will of God. He has a will. He provides fellowship. He can give you, oh, may you all have fellowship. He provides fellowship. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 13. 14. This one we all know. I don't know whether sometimes we think of it that way. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of and the communion of the Lord Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We have been saying, we say this about 10 times every day. The grace and the goodness, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion or the fellowship. Communion is the fellowship. The Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 
So you can provide fellowship, you can provide company. You can keep you company. Keep you company. I remember when I when I'm driving, I hardly play any any music. My my the radio in my car is idle. I never play it. That's one of you. <laughs> when you are driving, hey, always FM station. I do a piece FM, oh piece FM. Bye, bye, bye. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I know because anytime I give my car to some of you to go do an errand, you know, when you come back, you don't turn off the radio. You come and park the car, they leave the So as soon as I start the engine, hey, 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 I know the kind of thing that you have been listening to. <laughs> Angel FM. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, because when I'm driving, I, I have a, I sense. I'm mean, going to come away and come in. You know, I don't even play um, gospels. I have a deep sense that I have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I'm not there alone. I'm not in the vehicle alone. People have asked, why don't you get a driver? Why don't you? I said, no. When I'm driving, imagine forward. I came back here. Well, this morning I came back. I left Kumehu at 6 o'clock. And I got here at 11 o'clock. Five hours. Is it five? Yeah, five hours. Five hours and I, I knew I wasn't alone. And wherever the Holy Spirit is, is there with his angels. So I don't turn on the radio and tell the Holy Ghost to, to shut up. No. I tell the radio to shut up and I listen to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. May God do so for you also. Remember, I drove, I went to Kumar with Pastor Atta Wilson. Yeah, he said, oh. he said, Daddy, I've seen that you don't, when you are there, you don't play the radio. No, I said, no. I don't, I don't use the media. I like to have fellowship. Quiet, alone. Five hours. Amen. Oh. So he provides fellowship. And he has love. Last but one, he has love. Romans 15, verse 30. He has love. Romans 15. Romans 15, verse 30. He has love. He has love. So if you want to have him, fellowship, baptism, you must also have love. Romans 15, verse 30. Romans 15, 13. Now, I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the, of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. And through the love of the Spirit. He has love. He has love. So when he comes, he will love you. And then he can be grieved. <laughs> Finally, you can make him unhappy. And that is what many Christians do. They make the Holy Spirit unhappy. Unhappy. He can be grieved. Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. He can be grieved. The Bible says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for a day of redemption. Don't make him unhappy. Don't make him sad. Don't make him weep. Don't grieve him. Make him happy. When he's happy with you, then he'll bless you. Praise the Lord. So, have you received or did you receive the Holy Spirit? The title, as you heard, today is, Did you receive the Holy Spirit? When you become a believer up to now, did you or have you received the Holy Spirit? Part one. Amen. Amen. Next, we continue with part two. And the following week, um, we look at how to receive the Holy Spirit baptism, how to receive him. And don't forget, the presence of the Holy Spirit signifies or is a measure of his anointing. The more of the Holy Spirit that you have in him, you baptize in him, the more, that he's, the more of him that is in you and you in him, that is the level of anointing that you have. That level of anointing. That you have. So if you grieve him, then you don't have any anointing at all. You grieve him, no anointing. And unfortunately, there are many who grieve him and because they want to have the anointing, they want to have him. They want to be filled with him, but they keep on grieving him. So they are not filled. They resort to false or fake means 
pretending that they have the anointing when they don't. So they lie, they fake, they falsify things, and um, and people people who don't know are taken in. They are deceived. They are deceived. Because you cannot have the Holy Spirit working in you, the anointing, if you charge him, does he charge money? No. If you are charging money. It doesn't make, it doesn't make, it doesn't make uh, heavenly sense to me. So, when you go to play, where is money, money, money? For the, people are putting money. People put money in the pulpit. Everything is money. People come, prayers, money. Uh, Prophecy, money. Uh, fundraising, money. Uh, anything, money. What else? Everything, everything is money. Everything is money. It cannot be God working there. It cannot be. That's not how God works. That's not how God works. Amen. Let you on our feet. So, Nibwe Town, Teshin, Michel Kam, Tema. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? We're going to continue next week. And uh, we're going to show you, if you have not received him, we're going to show you how you can receive him. Because God has promised us mighty things this year. And as you can imagine, since the 31st, I've been teaching and preaching on how you can position yourself to get these things. God has said it. When God speaks the word, it goes to perform that for which it is spoken. It doesn't come back to God for it. So it will work for some people who are ready. Those who are not ready, it will pass them by. But may the word of God work for us all. In the name of Jesus.